Well, boys and girls, we're going to be a little more racy here today. Today, we're going to be talking about bare naked bodies. How many people have seen a bare naked body? Stick up your hand. Okay, I wasn't talking about that kind of body. I was talking about this kind of body. So today, what we're going to do is finish off, because now we've got everything stripped out of the car, and we can go in and we can have a look at all of the metallic parts of this vehicle that, uh, that are now uh, finally exposed. So let's start off over here. First off, I'm going to use terms, and some people say that, what does that term mean? This is a shotgun, or what we call a shotgun. <clears throat> They're on both sides. And when you have a shotgun and you have to mount it to the uh, hinge pillar, uh, sometimes you can't use welds. So what they've done here is uh, they've used these, um, these bolts, really, to hold them in place. So the other thing that happens with uh, shotguns occasionally is they, they have a tendency to hum. So what Tesla has done is they put in a bolt-in damper. Now, if we look down below here, you will see that uh, there's a, uh, what we think is a cast iron component. And that's to keep the uh, product from uh, basically bouncing around. After we have a look at that, we can notice here that uh, there's no paint on the inside of the uh, well here. And the reason for that is uh, why bother? I mean, paint's not good for the atmosphere. So uh, not having it is good. It also cuts down on the cost. And, um, and it's covered up with, uh, with uh, the front trim anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Let's look over here, down here. And you can see that right here, there's a couple of splatters. Now, this, this car is vastly better than what we saw before with the, um, uh, with the Tesla Model 3. But, uh, but this is something that all, all body guys want to try and keep clear of. We don't want to see, uh, we don't want to see that impedance uh, flashing out there. So let's, uh, let's move over here and show you a couple more things that are handy and uh, make the ride and drive better. So right here, we're looking at filling the, uh, uh, the hinge uh, pillar with, uh, with foam. And the reason that we do that is because um, we want to make sure that, um, that that noise vibration and harshness doesn't come back into the car and this is another normal source. Now let's look inside and you'll see here that there's some what looks like aluminum foil. And that's foil covered mastic. And the reason that you do that is to, in essence, uh, cover up the holes that are going to be inside the uh, inside that that footwell, um, and that again is going to be uh, holding in the uh, the foam as it's expanding. It holds it in, and it actually acts as a damper as well. So now we're inside the car. While you were doing that, I was jumping inside. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something that I mentioned before, but people haven't really uh, caught on as to what it means. So let's watch where my feet are. And we're going to talk about oil canning. So, <clears throat> hear that noise? That's oil canning. You can see that this is uh, really, it doesn't have to be strong. So it makes that funny noise that, like if you pushed in an oil can and made, uh, made a noise with, the, uh, with pushing the oil out. Okay, let's move up here to the, um, <clears throat> to the rail. And um, so what we've got here is, a uh, couple of things that are worth noting. First, you'll notice that there's a blackout paint here. Now, that blackout paint is not a mistake. Everybody does that in certain places, but um, they've used it for a minimum. So it's worth pointing out just uh, so that you don't think it's some kind of a mistake or something. Let's, uh, let's have a look here at the ditch molding. This, uh, this ditch molding is what you use this is the ditch here, and this is what you use to close off the ditch. So the ditch molding is cool because it doesn't, there's no locators or anything on it. It just drops in place, and then they put the butyl over the top of it to, uh, to put in the glass. So this is, this is pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with that. Next, uh, next down here, we're going to talk about something uh, that, I don't know, maybe I'm not so happy about. And that's, uh, and that's, the roof rack locations. Um, I, I don't know how this works. I, I don't know when the glass is in place. I do not know how you're going to get in there to uh, to make an attachment, especially when you get over here because this one's been covered up with uh, the butyl. 
This looks like what uh, we used to call a burp, where uh, extra material is uh, kind of like blobbed out. So this, uh, this is going to be very awkward for somebody to put a roof rack in. I highly recommend that if you're going to buy one of these vehicles and you want a roof rack, order it with the roof rack. Then you know you're going to get it. So now what we've uh, had a look at is pretty much uh, everything except for one thing that we found kind of unusual, and that's this. Um, we obviously had the glass removed, and when the guys came in to remove the glass, they found that uh, about half the stuff really wasn't cured, which is unusual. I've never, we've never bumped into that before. So at the end of the day, um, let's, let's make sure that, uh, that we, uh, we are tipping our waitresses. And I got one other thing that I need to do. And that's I've got a shout out for Hudson Hassel. Thank you very much for buying uh, one of the products. And uh, that's from your dad. And your dad says, you're a good boy regardless of what, uh, what your mother says. <laughs> Anyways. We'll see you guys. Have a great day. Bye now.